Chapter 4, Gods and Goddesses We move into another galaxy, far away from Earth, to one of the first ever created planets. This planet was one of the gods and the goddesses, one of the first waves to leave Source's womb of light. Any creation could be made here, explored and brought to life. Temples were created with lush gardens and flowers that grew as big as trees. Water flowed between temples with pure crystalline water that sparkled in the light. The water was alive with replenishment energy for the soul. This planet was created as a utopia for those exploring outside of Source's womb. This was a place to come to, to know what could be made and the omens of peace one could still have after leaving the sacredness of Source. All are Source. There were twelve gods and goddesses that lived here. As centuries passed, personalities grew, and many did not see eye to eye within the world they had created. They agreed to separate, to create space and territories where they would have their domain and be the rulers of their own lands. Once each god and goddess was established, they created species, animals, and many other beautiful beings of smaller nature to enjoy and view through the eyes of observation. There was great enjoyment during this period as each god and goddess flourished with their creations. After many centuries, some of the gods and goddesses became restless. Curiosity arose, and they wanted to see what the others were up to and would sneak onto their brothers' and sisters' lands, unaware of the outcome that would be bestowed upon them if they did. The results were war, hatred, and greed. Each god and goddess could see the division they had created was not working. They did not like thoughts of harming one another had entered their minds when one placed foot on their lands. They did not like that there were feelings of jealousy with each other's creations and the wanting to do better than one another. They did not like who they were becoming. This group of twelve gods and goddesses were at a standstill until they agreed to part ways. This was when the events took a turn and an agreement was made once again. The plan was to expand. The time had come to create worlds of their own. Some members within the group were even thinking far greater than that. They wanted to create dimensions, many planets existing in one realm, and millions of species living on planets. Their creations would be endless, exciting, and transformative. There was such excitement about creating life in its many forms that the majority of the gods and goddesses did not take the time to pause for a moment and think about the consequences. What would happen if you continue to create without care for your creations and the endless need for more? What could that manifest into? Once the creation is made, the acknowledgement needs to be known. The result has a life of its own. The gods and goddesses split into two. One part of the group had their energy set on more extensive, expansive views with endless possibilities. The other half was more hesitant, and they wanted to take things a bit slower. Time did not exist, and they knew they were all eternal. They wanted to start with one planet at a time, enjoying their creations while learning and growing. There was no right or wrong, good or bad. Each god and goddess was free to do as they pleased, which is what took place. They separated, and some created planets and took their time with what they manifested. And for the others, they made galaxies, dimensions, and layers between the realms with portals and wormholes. A frenetic energy was within the group of gods and goddesses that were going full steam ahead.
the competition between them became faster and larger. There was a need to be the best in their creations until Source stepped in and their game came to a complete stop. This group had fallen away from the light of purity and could no longer see the gift in life or the patience it took to create worlds and species. There are universal laws that a soul must obey or suffer the consequences of the fall. This group of fallen gods and goddesses did not want to be part of Source's rules any longer. They had a different vision, a grander one. They wanted to create their worlds, planets, and dimensions where they were in control without answering to Source. They enjoyed their chaotic state and felt they thrived while being in it. Source agreed with the separation this group of gods and goddesses could proceed with their makings. However, if, and this is a big if, if at any point their creations or they themselves cross the line of harming another for their own benefit, they would lose their powers of design and their light would be stripped from them until they were ready to come home again. You see, the dark needs the light, and the light needs the dark. There is a balance. This group of gods and goddesses agreed. Shortly, however, after this agreement, they created their last universe. Within this universe held Andromeda, Sirius, Lyra, Pallades, and many more star systems. This universe was created with divine love. However, war, conflict, and chaos was also created. And once again, Sore stepped in, stripping this group of their light. They were known as the Fallen. And Source repeated, When you are ready to come back to the light, We of the light will openly welcome you back. With those last words, they plunged into darkness. The fallen was a group of seven who learned to feed off of others' light to survive. They became weak in their energy if they did not have some kind of access to the light. The fallen went from planet to planet they had created within this universe to continue the chaos they lived for. Once their creative abilities and light had been stripped, they knew they needed others to help them continue their work. They went to planets in secret, cloaked from the species that lived there, to search for misguided souls in hiding or imprisoned and offer them a proposition. Their offering was to join their group and help them with their plan and they would then be given unlimited access to the souls that were unconscious and unaware of their own light. To the ones that were imprisoned and in hiding, this was a gift that was presented to them on a silver platter. To be out in the open and seen again, all of their misdemeanors and punishments lifted, this was a definite yes to this proposition. However, even for these souls in their current situation, they had the option to stop for a minute and see and feel if this deal was too good to be true. For indeed it was. Earth was created as a peacemaker planet for humans to live on, to be the ones to bring balance to the galactic wars. However, another intention was also set for humans to be the slaves to those in the galactic wars. The fallen ones placed a veil of illusion over earth before they were stripped of their light completely. Within this illusion, humans were unaware of who controlled the planet within the veil of forgetfulness. Initially, the imprisoned enjoyed taking children and all types of souls absorbing their light. After they were done with them, the souls that were taken were either killed or released back into the world in their drained and traumatized state. You see, the imprisoned ones were also under the illusion. Their illusion was that they would be seen once coming to Earth. Once they arrived, they found out 
they can only be in the dark in their actual forms, in caves and places underground, in the light. They must be invisible to humans while attaching themselves to another soul. The imprisoned became bold over time and would go up to light-filled souls disguised in a human suit, offering them fame and fortune if they could attach themselves to the soul. This seemed simple enough for some souls, especially those who had tried for so long to make it big. The fallen did not know there was a time limit on the chaos and destruction they had created. The light councils called many souls of light throughout the multiverse to help with the shift for humanity and Mother Earth. During this time, many imprisoned started to change their views and no longer wanted to serve the fallen, but could find no way out. When most humans expand their awareness and become conscious, forgiveness will rise for the imprisoned and the fallen, and the ruling of tyranny will end. This is when all illusions will collapse and be made into a time of purity within the light. This reign of control and manipulation ends here and now on earth.